Hello everybody, I'm Michael from the Spode Museum and I'm standing next to uh, one of the last flat press printing machines that was used at the Spode factory. It's very typical of the printing technology that was used in the late 18th and early 19th century to produce transfer printed ware. If you visit the Spode Museum, admission is free and you can often see this machine being used to produce uh, some demonstration prints every Sunday. Pulling down the handle was key to the operation of this machine. It caused the flat panel with the added copper plate and tissue paper to be flattened under the roller. The Manor foundry in Fenton was in business in the 1870s, so the machine is likely to date from this time. Several local foundries supported nearby collieries and the pottery trade. You know, the copper plates are original copper plates that yeah. we've rescued um, when the factory actually folded in 2007. Although they've been chrome plated or steel plated just to protect the copper because that's quite soft. Okay. So they're all hand engraved. Um, and, you know, the collection that we have is huge. So it's an intaglio process. Yeah. Intaglio means that the ink goes into the etched. Well, it's similar to, um, it's a, yeah, literally a fine art process. Fine art printers, engravers would use this process um, in exactly the same way. The difference is the substrate that we use to transfer the image is a tissue rather than a, a, a print paper. You know, a yes, but it... transfer printing uses ceramic pigments like cobalt blue mixed with oil rather than printer's inks as the pigments were designed to withstand firing and bond with the glaze. Printer's ink by itself would have burned off in the kiln. I just described what the, um, the pattern is. What, what this is, is a willow, it's a version of a willow. Okay. I mean there were sort of many variations on the willow pattern, which obviously was influenced by the um, influx of oriental imagery. So this is a westernized version yes. of the oriental um, oh, you can willow. See, yeah, you can see it much more clearly now yeah, that you've you can, uh, yeah. taken yeah. the excess yeah. off. Yeah. Um, and you can see the variations, quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I, I was taught by my colleague Cindy, who really knows the process completely yeah. she was taught by the last Angela time. is soaping the tissue paper with a brush soaping made the tissue paper pliable it also acted as a lubricant and helped the later adhesion to the pottery um, and they were you know they were great thinkers and innovators so now the printed image obviously you probably know this they had to you know the, the enlightenment Watch the movement of the press as she pulls the lever towards her. There is no film of the flat press in use on the factory floor, but here are some still images of the press being used by Chris Gibb in the last days of Spode. Zaffir's blue is the cobalt-based pigment used also in Chinese porcelain and in Delftware before Spode. I'm standing here next to a roller press, which was the technology that replaced the flat press. Um, in the 1840s, technology started to move very quickly and new innovations occurred. Uh, by the 1850s, these roller presses were being installed at this factory to replace the flat press printers. They're far more efficient than the flat press printers because workers could pull off a continuous roll of prints in one go rather than have to do one print at a time. Here is the Thomas Smith roller printing machine on the Spode factory floor. It was a popular patented model. The mixed pigment is applied to the roller with the copper engraving 
and a continuous roll of sized and soaped paper with transfers of the Camilla pattern is printed off. After application to the biscuit plates, they would go to the kiln for hardening on. This is the paper feed, which would have fed paper into the roller press. We're in the process of recurating this printing display at the moment, so it's not set up exactly as it should. Now, this machine was first introduced in the 1950s, and like the much earlier roller press, they far outlived their expected lifespan and were still in use at the factory, even in the last days of operation. They'd just been adapted to be electronically, electrically run rather than uh, using traditional methods of, of power. So, fantastic pieces of kit, all made locally. Uh, we've seen machines so far that have been made in Fenton, uh, Shelton and uh, other nearby uh, towns from the potteries. Incredibly well made pieces of kit uh, and they still still workable and still usable to this day. The patent sizing machine made by Hartley's of Stoke-on-Trent was an indispensable partner of the roller printing press. It supplied a dried printing paper of the right size for the needs of the potter's specific production run. The paper could be electrically or steam heated. Here are pictures of the two machines on the Spode factory floor. We're here at the Murray Curvex printing machine now, which was the last great innovation for copper plate printing. This particular Murray Curvex machine was used for printing back stamps onto the back of ware. This technology uh, is incredible technology and is still used in many uh, pottery factories to this day. It was developed at Spode in the 1950s by a very clever inventor called Guy Murray. Um, unfortunately for the factory, Guy Murray somehow managed to keep ownership of the patent of this machine for himself, even though the development of it was funded by, uh, by the Spode factory. Um, had the factory kept the patent for it for themselves, then they would have um, had um, a great financial interest, I think, over uh, since that time. The Murray Curvex printing machine transformed how patterns were applied to curved surfaces in pottery. The Murray Curvex used a gelatine mould to transfer intricate designs with remarkable speed and accuracy. The process began with an engraved metal plate which held the pattern. Ink was applied then transferred onto a rubber pad that wrapped around the curved surface of cups, jugs and bowls, ensuring a perfect print every time. This machine revolutionised mass production for companies like Spode and Burley, allowing them to decorate ware more efficiently. Even today, smaller versions called Mini Curvex, such as now in the Spode Museum, are still used for backstamping, marking the identity of each piece. <laughs> Thanks to Michael and the Spode Museum for curating the new display of pottery heritage. The museum is becoming even more of a site not to be missed and it is highly recommended. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Thanks for watching.